Welcome to another edition of Core Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I'm good, Brian. Big weekend, big week and weekend at Gulfstream Park in Florida, the Eclipse Awards and Pegasus Saturday. Yeah, it's a big weekend all over the country. This is the big, biggest weekend of racing so far in this short 2023 season, Matt. Uh, we, we've got uh, Arabian Night showing up in the southwest takes at Oakland Park. we got some good races uh, around the country. But Gulfstream Park is the epicenter this week, if you will. And, of course, the Pegasus World Cup is the big one. There's our cover boy, Cyber Knife. Matt, I'm a little disappointed that this horse will be making his final career start. And I, I, I want to tell you why real quick. Gunrunner wasn't the best two-year-old. He wasn't the best three-year-old. But at that time he turned four, he was a monster, a great horse at four. I'd like to see what Cyber Knife could do at four. But we're only going to get one race at four. Yeah, Brian, you know, you know, uh, there's big money. Uh, and uh, owner Al Gold uh, puts a lot of money into the game, buys a lot of horses, and he's come across uh, – a good one here, and uh, I'm sure on the stallion deal, he's going to have plenty of money to invest back in the game. And I agree, as a gun runner uh, on both sides, that's why he's going to get the stallion money. But that's also why he could have a great year uh, moving ahead. All right, you talked me down just a little bit, Matt. I'm off the ledge now, but still, I would wish to see Cyberknife as a four-year, as a full season four-year-old. But here we are. He's the top choice here, uh, the morning line favorite coming out of the 10 hole, five to two on the morning line, but there are a lot of horses to bet in this Pegasus World Cup field, a full field of 12, a couple of horses trying to get in, maybe long shots. If there was a scratch or two, if they did get in, but Cyberknife is the horse to beat Matt. He came oh so close to winning his third grade one of the year in his final start last year as a three-year-old just missing in that Breeders' Cup dirt mile. Yeah, that was a really gutsy performance, uh, head-to-head -head battle down the stretch with uh, Cody's wish, uh, stamping himself, you know, as he stepped up to face open company, uh, 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 older horses in in the dirt mile, that Cyberknife is the real thing. Yeah, Cyberknife had a very good year. He wasn't able to win a few of his biggest stars. But those second in the Breeders' Cup uh, Dirt Mile, second in the Travers, a win, a big win in the Haskell, a win in the Arkansas Derby, the Matt win. He had quite a year. And if he had just been a few feet better, I guess, in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, we might be talking about him as a, as a real potential three-year-old champion. Anyway, this will be his uh, only start at four, as we said. He's had uh, those near three months off since the Breeders' Cup working very well. Strikes me that Brad Cox usually has his horses ready for a race like this. Uh, nine furlong seems to be a good distance, a sweet spot for Cyber Knife. Both of his grade one wins came at this distance last year. And he's a horse who can um, come from a little bit off the pace or, or be pretty close early. Looks like there's a fair amount of speed in here. So I, I imagine he'll be coming a little bit off the pace Saturday. Yeah, it looks like a race that has a fair... Uh set up for horses who prefer to be out front and horses that come from behind a really wide open version of the pegasus world cup we don't have uh, a dominant heavy favorite like we've had in so many of the pegasus runnings like with arrogate and gun runner and nicks go and uh, life is good um the the pegasus to this point has been a race that has been dominated by uh favorites when favorites haven't won it's been the second choice that has been victorious and the highest mutual payoff was uh 3.40 to 1 when mucho gusto won right matt and and i tell you what you're you're right it, it is a wide open race there's no superstars in here but i i do feel like cybernet is a legitimate favorite here in the pegasus world cup one of his uh, top contenders breaks from the rail mat, and I have the pace projector up there, and it might not be a bad spot to be from coming a little bit off the pace as we see Proxy well back on this time form U.S. pace projector. 
proxy finally broke through after knocking on the door so many times in graded stakes races and stakes races. He finally broke through in his last race uh, about two months ago. Churchill Downs with a big win over a good horse in the grade one Clark. Big win over a good horse. But, Brian, it was a six-horse field. It was a six-horse field, but West Will Power was going good. I think Proxy may have turned a corner. We'll see. Number two is Simplification. A nice horse, Matt. A, a, a stakes winner, a great winner at Gulfstream Park. He's run a lot of good races. But on the other hand, I just feel like he hasn't been able to beat a field like this yet. I don't know if he's going to do it on Saturday. Yeah, Brian, I, I don't feel like I ha can find any compelling reason that uh, he's going to break through in this race. Um, he, I thought maybe in the Harlands holiday when he was moving back to Gulfstream Park where he's uh, – Last had victory in the Fountain of Youth on the Derby Trail last year, but that didn't do the trick either as he ended up third. Simplification runs good races, gets close, but as I said, I can't come up with a reason that he's going to get a win in here. Yeah, and I can't disagree with you, Matt. That third in the Harlan's Holiday surely had uh, uh, the winner, Skippy Longstocking, as the best horse in the race. More about him soon. Number three, Riding with Biden, Matt, he's a horse from Parks. Got a good, good record, a bunch of stakes wins, especially recently. But again, he's coming from Parks. Yeah, Brian. Uh, um, the the mile and an eighth distance certainly won't be a factor for riding with Biden. Got two wins in uh, uh, overnight listed stakes at Parks. But before that, I think on the, the Pennsylvania Derby undercard, he won the grade three Greenwood which is a mile and a half race. Um, uh, regular rider, uh, Paco Lopez, Lopez gets off to ride simplification. Yeah, riding with Biden uh, looks a little cheaper to me, but he could be a pace presence uh, with his early speed. Number four, Matt, the horse for course. Way to Barrio, uh, almost a startling record. He's run uh, four times at Gulfstream Park. He's won the mall. He's a grade one winner. He's the Dual graded stakes winner at Gulfstream Park, four for four. Hasn't won a race anywhere else. He's at his favorite track. He's working well at his favorite track. And 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 probably a good sign for White Barrio is his last race of the year. I, I feel like the Kentucky Derby might have been just a little bit out of him. But his last race of last year, uh, the uh, Cigar Mile, which was uh, about eight weeks ago, was very promising for a horse who obviously likes Gulfstream Park. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. That was a really good effort uh, to get third in the grade one cigar mile. No wins, like kind of like with simplification, no wins since the Derby Trail uh, and the Florida Derby. Same scenario for me. Can getting back to Gulfstream Park be what White Abario needs to uh, get back to the winner's circle? Yeah, we're working well for a trainer. Uh, Safi Joseph Jr., who's got a trio in here, Matt, and I put the pace projector back up because we're going to talk about some real speed. We already mentioned riding with Biden. I think White Abaro, by the way, is a horse like Cyberknife who can win close to the pace or he can come from a little farther back. I kind of like that about White Abaro. The next horse on the list, he has passed horses in his career, but certainly defunded from the trainer. Bob Baffert has a lot of early speed, Matt, and after showing some flashes early in his career, career and then showing some dismal efforts early in his career. He's come around of late with two graded stakes wins. Yeah, Bob Baffert, the only trainer to win the Pegasus twice. He did it with Arrogate. He did it with uh, Mucho Gusto. I think Defunded may be in the best form of his career right now, having won his last two, the Native Diver at the end of November. Um, and before that, with the in the grade one awesome again he's got some speed he's got plenty of speed he's a dangerous horse i i always wonder about horses coming from california from the handicap division but for baffert it seems to work baffert brings them to new york florida and other places and they seem to run so defunded is a uh, dangerous horse and, and and of course he's had the best form of his career of late with those two graded stakes wins, including that grade one. I'm a little surprised that the time form U.S. pace projector here, Matt, has art collector back and forth. I get 
guess he's pretty close still there. In, but Art Collector is, is a very fast horse who's done some big things in his career. He's won the Woodward. He's won the Bluegrass. I'm not sure he's quite as good these days as he once was. But another danger speed horse who, who again, has a lot, a lot of back class. A lot of back class, a horse that I have liked in the past. But, Brian, he's been off since October 1st. And that's a little concerning, but you know it is Bill Mott. Um, Mott's looking for his first victory <clears throat> in the Pegasus, the race that the Pegasus took the place of the Don Handicap. Of course, Bill Mott uh, was prominent in that race, the 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 breakout race for Cigar, the Great Cigar, who won it twice. I digress a little bit. Uh, 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 Building up Bill Mott's credentials, um, yeah, a uh, horse that uh, you know has run some great races. I don't know if he's won, you know, this kind of level grade one in the past. Along with the layoff, the long layoff uh, has me a little bit off, Art Collector. Yeah, and and you mentioned those Don wins for Cigar, which of course the Don became the Pegasus World Cup, as you said, and and that first one was one of my least favorite races ever because that was the race Holy Bull got hurt, and uh, we could have seen something good in his furthering career and, and maybe even in that showdown with the streaking cigar back in the time. I digress as well, Matt. Forgive us, folks. We're, we've been longtime fans of horse racing here at Horse Center. Uh, art Collector, yeah, you know, it comes to me if, if either Defunded or Art Collector gets a breather early, gets out there, and the other one seems to just stay off a little bit. That probably won't happen, but if either do, extra dangerous and art collector falls into that category here in the Pegasus World Cup because he's run he's won races like this in the past. Another dangerous horse, Matt, number seven, and that's gonna be a refrain for me. Dangerous horses in this Pegasus, but certainly Skippy Longstocking. Third in the Belmont last year, the winner of the West Virginia Derby. He's won some races at Gulfstream Park. Honestly, I think he's his best race yet might have been that last one. The prep for the Pegasus World Cup four weeks ago when he won the Harlan's Holiday in style. Yeah, and, and we've already alluded to the fact that it was a pretty good field talking about uh, simplification uh, in that race. I guess Skippy Longstocking has been a little bit of an in and outer. Uh, won the Harlan's Holiday, won the West Virginia Derby. In between there, had a little bit of a clunker in the Pennsylvania Derby. but. If he can uh, show that he really has an affinity to Gulfstream Park and reproduce that Harlan's holiday, he's going to be dangerous. Yeah, if he runs back to that race, he's going to be dangerous. This is a tougher field, obviously, a deeper field, obviously. But that Harlan's holiday was a nice performance, makes Skippy Longstocking a player here in the Pegasus World Cup. I've never seen him win a race like this yet, but he could be coming up to it the right way for Sappy Joseph Jr. Here's another dangerous horse, Matt, and, and along with the funded, I think one of the real wild cards in the race, and that's number eight, Get Her Number. Get Her Number is another horse who showed flashes of talent. In fact, he was a grade one, one winner back as a juvenile. His career kind of went sideways for a while, but now Peter Miller has him going the right way. Two really good one-turn races to close out his 2022 season coming into the, the Pegasus. Yeah, and, and, you know, that's kind of the story in general with Peter Miller uh, uh, horses. When he gets them good, they can be really dangerous. Uh, um, get her number. You were talking about uh, his last race. We were talking about the Cigar Mile before uh, with White Abario, but get her number, beat White Abario in the Cigar Mile. And before that, had a very nice allowance prep victory at Delmar. Yeah, the question for me with get her number, not is he getting good, good not is he getting good enough to, to, to run with these horses, but the question for me is does he want the two turns of the Pegasus World Cup or is he better at one turn as those last two races were? Number nine, there's good old Dwayne Lucas, Matt. I believe he's 87 years old. Uh, broke some ribs recently falling off a uh, pony or getting bucked off a pony. He keeps saying he thinks Last Samurai has a shot. He might be a horse for course, though, and, and, and unfortunately for him, it's not Gulfstream Park. It's Oakland Park, where, where I think he may be best. Last Samurai looks like a long shot here, and in the pace projector, you see him last early. Yeah, 
yeah, a long shot, but you know, uh, a, a long shot with a pretty good resume, and we'll be getting uh, international superstar jockey Frankie Dottori in the saddle. Frankie Dottori riding the long shot in the Pegasus. Who would have thought? Here we are, last samurai on his best. Maybe he's got a shot, but I can't love him in this spot. We already talked about Cyber Knight quite a bit, Matt. We're going to look at that pace projector where they have him almost smack dab in the middle of the field. But one thing I'll say about Cyber Knight, I like him when he's involved, when he makes a move going into the far turn, when he's right there on the far turn and he's right there as they straighten out. If he falls too far back behind all these horses who have some early pace, I do worry that could be too, too tough a task for Cyber Knight, kind of like what happened to him in the Pennsylvania Derby. But for me, it's the horse to beat. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, regular rider, uh, Florent Giroux, uh, knows him well. Absolutely. Uh, two more horses here. Stiletto Boy, you saw him uh, uh, prominent in the early pace. He actually ran third in this race, was not, not far behind Nick Skull last year. It's a big long shot. Uh, I think this is a deeper field. You know, there's no life as good or Nick Skull in the field. And I don't think Nick Skull ran his best race in last year's Pegasus World Cup. But Stiletto Boy is one of those horses who likes to cash a check. So, if you're playing trifectas and super factors, Stiletto Boy might be a horse worth, worth considering. Yeah, talk about big odds, Brian. Uh, on a quality horse, Stiletto Boy has been mixing it up in the, that older male handicap division uh, on the West Coast for the last couple years and uh, usually runs well, winning, you know, w winning a race here and there. And, uh, like you said, the, the, the biggest positive is that uh, here's a horse who could very well sneak into the trifecta, the superfecta, and is at 30 to 1 on the morning line. Yeah, and, and the final horse on this list, Matt, number 12, O'Connor, uh, a group one winner in Chile. Uh, he's had two starts in Florida with mixed results, I guess, because the allowance win is debut in America was very impressive coming from off the pace and waiting for fun but then he disappointed in the harlan's holiday i could see him, him uh stepping, stepping back a little bit in the second race in america and then coming on again in his third uh he's got class but on the other hand after that harlan's holiday i don't know how serious i can be about o'connor yeah i feel the same way out in the number 12 post position uh uh i question the morning line odds but i guess maybe that's partially the safi joseph factor yeah, O'Connor, a, uh, a bit of a wild card in the Pegasus World Cup. All right, now we got a lot to cover still. We're going to go Pegasus World Cup turf next, and it's another full field, which we like to see, which we like to bet on, Matt. Uh, let's go over all the horses we think could be contenders in here, and, and that's kind of most, most of the field. It starts with number 10, Ivar. Matt, do you realize Ivar's been in the British Cup mile for the last three years, and he's been competitive all three of those races? Yeah, Brian. I think he did. He did. He finish fourth uh, in all three of those. Uh, all three of those starts. Um, regardless, uh, he's run really well for uh, Paolo Lobo. Uh, uh, also, uh, recently a second in the Turf Mile, a second in the Woodbine Mile. Uh, uh, Ivar is a uh, confirmed miler uh, in his career record. Only has one start at the mile and an eighth dis a mile and an eighth distance. Yeah, he's one at a mile sixteenth, but a mile and eighth that one start was not great. Uh, certainly the most accomplished horse in the race, but on the other hand, he ha hasn't won in a lot of those races. He did win a Grade One mile at Kingland, but that's getting near two and a half years ago for Ivar. I, I think it's deserving favorite with his credentials, but on the other hand, a very beatable favorite in here for me, especially if you think that nine furlongs is outside his sweet spot like matt and i, I think we agree on that so ivar the horse to beat but beatable as, as the favorite in the pegasus world cup turf uh second choice on the morning line is city man uh, matt and city man a new york red for trainer christophe clement that great turf trainer christophe clement he's streaking right now you know he won five stakes races last year and he's won three straight stakes races coming in to this Pegasus World Cup turf. Yeah, he's got an interesting resume with a mix of 
victories against uh, New York breads and in open company, particularly that last race when he won the Fort Lauderdale, which was the local prep race at Gulf Green Park for this Pegasus World Cup uh, turf event, three in a row. Uh, you, you folks that have been watching the show over the years, you're going to say, oh, come on, Matt, you can't say that you don't like the 12th post position because you always say you're not a post position guy, but that's way out there on this uh, Gulfstream Park uh, uh, turf course. I don't know. Uh, uh, three wins in a row. Is City Man going to be able to win four in a row? He, I've seen all of his races. Uh, you know, he's not a horse that puts away a field with the, with, uh, dominance, whether it's the Fort Lauderdale or against New York bread, uh, uh, stakes. Um, I don't know. Um, I feel like this is a race where the two top choices, Ivar and city man, may be a little bit vulnerable. Yeah. I like city man a little bit better than you do, Matt. Uh, I, I think he, he really came to hand for a tra trainer who can keep turf horses going good, good for a long time. Christophe Clement city man won three open stakes and those were three open stakes wins including last time over the course uh in the fort lauderdale as you mentioned and a, and a good looking win in there i think he's going well and he's the type of horse who can win from different places so i'm hopeful that he can get a good trip coming from the outside post in here as you see he'll be uh forwardly placed but not on the lead and this doesn't look like a too fast a pace one of the horses you see close to that early pace matt is lady spite spear lady spite spear is the third choice on the morning line and she is indeed a lady she's a female trying the boys uh she also is streaking although she lost her last race but she comes in on quite a roll for venerable trainer roger atfield yeah i i, I find lady uh uh spite spear interesting in that this spot um uh she was third in the breeders cup philly and mare turf a good third against the obviously a strong field that was won by a top-notch uh, European um, coming, you know, like you said, off of three wins in a row at Woodbine on the synthetic and on the turf, a versatile type. I don't think Hall of Famer uh, Roger Atfield would ship her down here unless she's got a shot. So um, interesting spot for this mayor i think she could be a factor yeah absolutely she's not gonna be my top pick but uh, you could easily say that her last race in which he was a very good third in the breeders cup philly and mayor turf early november for keeneland behind the winner tuesday uh was a stronger field a stronger overall field than she'll see here uh as she as she transitions from ladies to men um she's a philly a mayor who, who likes to win she's a uh, a mare who's got really good tactical speed. I think she's a real player here in this Pegasus World Cup turf. It's tough to beat 11 good males, but uh, she might be a horse who could do it. Just outside her, Matt, is number seven speaking scout who looks to be really coming to hand for trainer Graham Motion. Uh, he beat Witt last time in the Grade 1 Hollywood Derby. Speaking scout looks to be going good. Yes, looks to be getting good. Um, obviously, is going to be making a jump from uh, three-year-olds in that after that nice win in the Hollywood Derby out on the West Coast. Had a second in the Twilight Derby. Won the Hawthorne Derby for Graham Motion. Uh, in, I, I, if this horse continues to move forward, I like this horse and I like the odds. Yeah, eight to one on the morning line. Probably uh, we could see something like that when they go to the post. I'm, I'm a little conflicted because clearly those last three races are really good for a horse who, before those last three races, didn't look like he was a world beater on turf. But those last three races are really good. Graham Motion, uh, 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 an excellent trainer. But I'm a little worried about a couple of things. Number one, coming from, from California, coming from well off the pace, as you see him here in the pace projector. And finally, the thing you mentioned, he's only run uh, against three-year-olds, which is the same for number one, Witt, who's run well since he, he was a multiple graded stakes winner on dirt, but, 
but with us run well since transitioning to the dirt for trainer Todd Fletcher. Uh, not quite good enough last time against speaking scout. Yeah, um, you know, uh, uh, Todd Fletcher, of course, uh, was expecting to have Colonel Liam in this race to defend his victory from last year, but um, he's been retired after a, he's got some, uh, I think, ankle problems. Um, but Wit is no Colonel Liam. Yeah, I, I kind of feel the same way, although his four turf races are all good. I just think there's too many good horses in here to to jump on the Wit bandwagon. Good governance was uh, in, in the Chad Brown barn for a long, long time, Matt, but I thought he ran a very good race for his first uh, start for the new barn of Anamia last time. Uh, in the Fort Lauderdale, because he had some trouble when he was third in that Fort Lauderdale. And I like the winner of the Fort Lauderdale. So good governance could be a live long shot in here. Yeah, he's got the three nice allowance wins on his resume. Um, 15 to one on the morning line. He's going to have to take a big step up, though. Number three, Atone, Mike Maker. Horse has speed. There's not a ton of speed in here. Atone has never won a stakes race, but he's run a lot of good races. Coming off a nice win at Aqueduct. Yeah, that was back in November. A tone could be dangerous if he uh, relaxes early on this lead. And I think he will become a stakes winner sooner than later. Hurricane Dream, a uh, horse who won his first three races in France, was actually in the French Derby way back when. Uh, been uh, trying. He's had three seconds in group races in France last year. The form in France is decent without winning. First start for trainer Graham Motion. Yes, uh, maybe a horse that I'm going to like a little bit later on. Typically, Graham Motion um, doesn't do really well with his European imports in their first American starts. Usually, they show more later on. Good, uh, good information there, Matt. Number nine is Decorated Invader, the other Christoph Clement horse. This is a horse who got a lot, a lot of class early on as a two year old and three year old. He went off a little bit. He had a long layoff. He seems to be building the form back and ran a good second last time in the Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, and and second to his uh, his stablemate, City Man. Um, you know that bodes well. And, and finally, the eleven is another horse who I think is a live long shot in here. His name is Masterpiece Matt, uh, an uh, an import from South America. He's run in a lot of good races in America since coming over. He's only won a couple, but uh, that Eddie Reed last year at nine furlongs was very impressive. He beat good horses there. Uh, I like the way he's moving forward. He's a horse who wants to rally, but uh, he's won his races at nine furlongs. He's all nice races at nine furlongs. Looks like an interesting player coming out of the Breeders' Cup turf. Yeah, and uh, he came to America and began his career with Chad Brown, went out west and uh, ran for Michael McCarthy, um, ran for McCarthy in the Breeders' Cup turf, and now he's going to be making his first start for Safi Joseph. Yeah, he's bounced around a little bit, but there's a, the, that recent form, it was for Michael McCarthy, is pretty good. And even the Breeders' Cup turf, where he was beaten seven or eight lengths, is not a bad performance if he enjoys the cutback to nine for a long. So another horse to look, look at there in the Pegasus World Cup turf. Matt, we talked about a lot of horses running in these $3 million and $1 million races, respectively. Fun to handicap. I think it's going to be fun to bet. Let's get right to it and go to our top picks. I'm going to let you go first. We'll stay on the main track for the $3 million nine for a long Pegasus World Cup. Yeah, Brian, I think, as I was mentioning earlier in the show, the longest uh, payoff in the Pegasus uh, World Cup has been was around 7-2. to two. I think there's a chance that we may have a winner of the Pegasus, long, uh, Pegasus World Cup at, long, at the longest odds in history. Although I do have tons of respect for Cyberknife, I am going to go against cyber knife in here i'm going to hope that skippy Longstocking likes gulfstream park a lot and can put together another race like the harlands Har harlands holiday skippy will be my top pick yeah one of several in here matt that i considered for the pegasus world cup but the truth is the truth is for me matt i actually like a stable make white just a little bit better and i know white of barrio 
loves Gulfstream Park. White Barrio will be the horse that I'm playing with the favorite because I think this is Cypher Knife's race to win. I think he goes out a winner. Yeah, probably as the favorite, but I don't think he'll be a low favorite. I think he goes out a winner and then we have even more reason to be disappointed that he's not going to have a full four-year-old season. Cyber night for me in the Pegasus World Cup. Pegasus World Cup turf, Matt, you're on another horse with some odds. Tell me about it. Yeah, Brian, I kind of feel like we maybe like had one of those switching things going on like uh, with our picks uh, this week. I feel like your picks look like my picks and my picks look like your picks uh, typically, but that's what makes this all fun. Brian, I just don't like either one of the favorites. I I don't like Ivar. He's a miler, hasn't gotten to the winner's circle. City man, is he really going to win four in a row from the uh, outside post position? Maybe, but I got to play against. I'm going to go with uh, speaking scout for Graham Motion, thinking he is a horse that is getting better, is going to come with odds. I'll be honest with you, Brian. I'm probably not going to bet bet to win in here. I'm going to do some trifectas with some of these longer priced horses that we've mentioned. And I'm going to leave out Ivar, and I'm going to leave out City Man. Yeah, and I'm, I'm on the other side of the fence. I like City Man. Uh, he's second choice on the morning line, I know, but I think he's just – become the best horse in the race right now. And I think he's going well. He's got a good win over the turf course. I like City Man and I like Christophe Clement. He gets these horses rolling and I think City Man is rolling right now. A lot of long shots. I mentioned horses like Masterpiece and Atone and, and, and your horse there or several others. I, 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 you know, deep down, I'd like to see the mayor run a big race and I think she probably will. But what it boiled down to me is if there's one horse that I really can pick to win this race, it had to be city man all right folks that's our pegasus world cup and pegasus world cup turf previews and picks here on horse center matt before we go let me get a party shot from you my friend yeah hey thanks for watching the show everybody again it's another pegasus world cup we're well now into the racing season of 2023 um Kentucky Derby Trail going on also. Big race in the Southwest. So enjoy your weekend of racing, and we'll see you next week on Horse Center. Oh, we'll definitely see you next week right here on Horse Center, folks. We sure enjoy you watching every week. Thank you. As well, we want to thank, uh, say thanks to our uh, friend in the main office there, Candace Curtis, for the race graphics. Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. And, of course, Time Forum U.S. for their excellent pace projections. If you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Do it for us now. Folks, we'll be back right here next week with another big edition of Horse Center. We'll see you then.